Greetings ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only, Maxi here once again, and I am from the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Pick Let's Pick Game for the Nintendo GameCube slash PlayStation 2. So, last time we've completed the forms of not only Pooh's Dream, but also Roo's Dream, Owl's Dream, Eeyore's Dream, and Rabbit's Dream. Because of this though, we somehow managed to able to complete it, bravest of the more challenges with all five of those dreams and on top of that we finally managed able to get ourselves all of those cookies specifically in Rouge Dream and Rabbit's Dream. So today for this video is going to be well potentially speaking this is going to be the finale in terms of Piglet's Big Game because of that though we're now going to be tackling through in my honest opinion one of the hardest dreams to get to specifically in bravest of the mall challenges and because of that though now afterwards though we can pretty much expect that we will be able to actually tackle for the final level in the game known as Flooded Woods. So because of that though, yeah I can't believe we're actually getting very close towards the end of this though. Especially concerning about the fact that, well, we'll be speaking though about the fact that, well, you probably already know what that's going to be represented with. So either way though, now as I said before about the fact that out of all the actual bravest of the mall challenges though, is that Ticker Stream is by far is the hardest of the bunch. But that's only mainly because about the fact that the AI pattern with all these uh, heflums and Warzels or anything else to be more specific and on top of that the time limit is a bit strict in some sections well, to be more specifically, if you really want to go after the forms of every single potions in this particular dream. And luckily though, since about the fact the matter is though, is about the fact that we can p exponentially try to collect the last few uh, cookies in this place. So, either way, so a few things I want to explain while this is going on is that, well, today's day is of course the 29th of March today, in this case in 2023 today. Naturally speaking though, about the fact the matter is though, is that we've only got about one week left until the Super Mario Bros. movie is going to be releasing on a big screen. So, really excited about that, and I'm sure most people are already excited about this as well. So, either way though, I suppose we'll let uh, both Mighty and Ray will both mention more about it, until whenever we get to that certain point. So, either way though, chances are though, we can pretty much expect that we will be able to actually just get ourselves some popcorns until that film comes out. So, either way though, that might be saying something. So, now, as far as I'm aware about the fact the matter is though, out of all the actual dreams throughout the majority of the game, as I mentioned this before, I seemed able to miss quite a lot of cookies in this dream, but that's only mainly because about the fact that I somehow got distracted by getting chased by the forms of not only basic wall souls, but also I couldn't be bothered able to do of some bit of uh, combat during the forms of this dream as much, but that's only mainly because I usually just try to save it up for the likes of the forms of, uh, some mandatory progressioning for the bridge, as well as the forms of that particular, some situations like this, for, you know, grabbing those specific tiles, to able to actually access the haunted mansion itself. So, either way, so, yeah, there's not much else I can say about this, obviously. So, either way, now I suppose I should probably also mention is about the fact that, well, when it comes to Sonic Origins Plus, that uh, they've obviously did bring us some screenshots about the fact that, yeah, indeed, Knuckles is finally going to be able to be become playable in Sonic CD, which I found is really cool still. And on top of that, what I've noticed about the, from the start though, is that I'm pretty sure for classic Amy, I'm pretty sure the gameplay style might be slightly similar to the forms of, I don't know, Sonic Events or Sonic Events 2, but we shall see what happens in due time, specifically three months time. So because of that though, still very excited about that particular expansion version of Sonic Origins. So, relatively speaking, though, about the fact that, well, relatively speaking, I'm just really looking forward to that particular compilation, or to be more specifically, the updated version of that particular compilation is going to be releasing during that time. And I'm pretty sure about the fact that it did say on the price tag, on the dollars, is that they will able to actually make the expansion pack, um, cost about, like, $10. And I'm pretty sure the UK version in pound conversion, I'm pretty sure it's going to be like, I don't know, 8 quid or something like that. Mind you, I haven't exactly looked it up on it yet, but that's only mainly because, at the moment, 
They didn't seem to able to actually update the forms of the actual list yet, but um, hopefully they will eventually. But uh, what I do know about uh, right from the get go is about the fact that the price tag on the physical version did somehow exist, and uh, it turned it did turn out it's going to cost about forty dollars for its uh, you know physical copy. And as far as I'm aware, in the UK price is going to be thirty five quid. So. Yeah, it's roughly, it's going to be like exactly the same price count as the forms of how it does it in, let's just say, Sonic Mania Plus back in the day in 2018. Despite the fact that back in 2018, that we've only got the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch version for sure. But either way though, but every nowadays I've now got myself the Xbox One version of Sonic Mania Plus, so I can usually enjoy my time with the game so many times, especially just obtaining achievements or trophies, whatever to be more specific, so either way though, because chances are, yeah, everything else will be pretty much encountered for, so, anyway, so as far as I'm aware, about the fact the matter is though, as far as what both Mighty and Ray have both already mentioned about this already, that uh, obviously it's been, you know, 10 years since Luigi's Mansion 2 first came out on the Nintendo 3DS, like, I do already know uh, from the get-go as well, that uh, it's even weird about the fact that that particular game came out. I would say during the forms of in, um, well, usually relatively speaking, though, it did manage to able to came out uh, during the forms of the 28th of March in the UK version, but I'm pretty sure it did came out in, I don't know, first day or something? Mind you, I haven't really paid attention to the actual past calendars as much, but either way, though, I uh, have to admit it though right away. I do apologize for my commentary goes a bit iffy at points. But exponentially speaking, though, is about the fact that, well, we're getting very close towards the end of this game. So because of that, yeah, let's just go ahead and find some more cookies inside the Haunted Mansion. Because obviously I got distracted by, you know, just trying to able to obtain the ticker stripes in that section. And on top of all that stuff, though, about the fact that we've already taken down those wolzels, which by the way, someone said in the comments that uh, those wolzels that we've already taken down are journey forms within by the end of Tigger's Dream. These are known as sporty wolzels because get it? They wear sporty outfits alongside with they holding a tennis racket. So I can totally see why they they call it uh, sporty wolzels. So yeah, that's all I can say about it. Now I'm pretty sure about the fact that what makes this dream a bit difficult when it comes to doing Bravest of the Mall Challenge is this room right there, or specifically this section, because as far as I'm aware, like I mentioned this before, I'm not a really big fan of the forms of jackpot head alarms, because not only because it brings you some random luck factor to it, well, in terms of dealing with them in combat, but as far as trying to able to chase after them, well, they can really try to mess you up if you don't usually surround you by them. So, either way, yeah, I just have no idea why I'm questioning that. So, either way, so let's go ahead and just deal with this particular section anyway. So, just in case we can able to actually come back for that particular hardest uh, section when it comes to Bravest of the Mall Challenge. And thankfully, they just somehow almost going to get stuck by the forms of that particular fence around it. But either way, we did somehow complete it. So, there we go. So, relatively speaking though, not only because it's one of the hardest of the bravest of the mall challenges, but it's also it's one of the longest too. Meaning about the fact that going through there, as you can see, well, usually if you go onto the snowy bit, it makes the entire section rather pointless. Especially because, well, you only go for that particular section in the winter part. Well, it might be pretty tricky to explain because I know for a fact it's been about you know, quite a few weeks ago since we actually uh, last got to that point. So, either way, I actually kind of think about it. It's been like, I don't know, a week ago since we've actually experienced this dream. So, because of that though, everything else would be pretty much expected. And I'm pretty sure that uh, for the next section we're going to be entering right now, I'm pretty sure it only contains one Heffalump, and that's what appears to be Trooper Heffalump, as far as I can tell from the shadows. And of course, we do have to be quick, because obviously the time limit just goes ridiculously fast. So, either way, we got this no problem. Although, that was actually a close call too, because if I didn't get him, basically though, I could have to able to go back and forth between you know, different sections, and then go back to the previous section as far as we're entering into. So, either way, though, that takes care of that. So now let's go ahead and move on to the majority of the winter section. So, either way. Now, I'm pretty sure that certain cookies, they are 
quite well hidden. So I will try my best if I was going to able to try to find all of these uh, cookies all at once. So either way though, I have no idea what is going on with my laptop at the moment. I'm guessing there was one of those random notification pop-ups that somehow popped up. So yeah, it just comes out of nowhere for that particular point. So anyway, and I highly doubt I don't think I can probably able to deal with this part on the first attempt though. But then if I don't, then I could probably able to try to able to find, you know, I would say the last cookie in this section because I think something tells me that yeah I did somehow missing uh, one cookie and that's what appears to be on this log over there so yeah I will be back for that don't worry assuming of course if the time runs out so either way though yeah that's what I mean about the fact that trying to surround those walls is a bit difficult to deal with although speaking of walls though I think relatively speaking this is actually going to be the final time we're going to be seeing basic walls throughout the entire game because afterwards, though, until we re whenever we get to the final level in the game, well, spoiler alert, they won't be able to be involved during the informs of the final level in the game. So because of that, though, uh, relatively speaking, though, about the fact that I'll talk more details about the final level as soon as we're able to completely done with everything in terms of ticker stream for not only collecting the last remaining cookies, but also just trying to tackle through bravest of the all challenges, as you can tell. Because, yeah, that's what I mean about the fact that this is the reason why it took so long to able to actually get this process going. Especially because, well, it only took me quite a few attempts to able to actually complete certain things. But, obviously, about the fact that, well, it is pretty difficult sometimes. Especially noticeable in Tigger's Dream in some cases, though. Which, I get it because it's towards the very end of the game. So, either way, though, that makes it a little bit more of a situational thing, I suppose. Now, I believe on the Game Boy Advance version, I suppose I forgot to mention about it. I'm pretty sure you don't have to deal with the forms of bravest of them all challenges on the Game Boy Advance version. Mind you, I haven't exactly looked upon that particular version, so because of that, Oh yeah, speaking of such, let me know in the comments down below for the question of the day. Do you guys want me to tackle for the Game Boy Advance version of Piglet's Big Game? Although, despite the fact they plays kind of similar to the console version, except the fact that they only got uh, four dreams out of six dreams, and in addition with the forms of the final level is also included on there. Oh, wait a second, I'm somehow missing two cookies in this spot. Oh, my bad. Because I keep thinking about the forms of... Uh, uh, one of those little spots that I somehow managed to able to just, well, go a bit of sidetracked for a moment. But either way, now we're basically done with this particular section with all these, uh, you know, cookies and everything. So, now we're done with that. So now let's go ahead and move on to the next section where usually there is a Brave Face Factory that was usually in here. So, either way... So, uh, by the way, I really do like the loading screens every time whenever you go to the next part, because at one point about the fact that they do manage to go back and forth, well, between both Piglet and the Potion, just managed to be able to go back and forth between left and right, and then basically what happens was, is that, well, I'm actually kind of thinking about it, is that, uh, is that what I'm supposed to, ah, uh, there we go. It's quite well hidden sometimes if you do not know where the structure of the actual cookies they're going to be hiding in. So yeah, very clever indeed, especially because unlike the forms of how it does on a follow-up game called Winnie the Pooh's Rumbly and Tumbly Adventure, it makes the honey hunting a lot easier just because of all that particular shiny uh, object will be able to become, you know, shining and stuff like that, which actually represents where the honey pots are located. Well, there's technically both colors. They do manage to able to, well, make the actual objects a bit shinier. Like, for instance, the yellow ones will bring you uh, honey pods, and the blue ones will bring you some music notes. So, yeah, spoiler alert for those of you who want to know what that's going to be all about. So, either way, though, yeah, let's just go ahead and tackle for this particular section right here. And something tells me it is going to be pretty tricky at this point, especially because, you know, with large areas like this, it'll just make things a bit difficult to able to just get them cornered, especially that usually unlike in the small areas, that's uh, basically though that it makes things ten times as easy. So there we go, we've got all of these potions in that particular area, so and I'm pretty sure that the only areas that does not contain um, enemy potions, which are, I would say one of those sections in uh, the beginning portion of the world, or the dream rather, 
and there's also the one v one inside Tigger's house, alongside with the haunted mansion itself. And on top of all that stuff, though, on this little frozen pathway with the actual fire with it, and also with the uh, the cookie factory was originally there. So either way, so now let's go ahead and move on to this next part, which. As a result, if I do end up missing something, then uh, of course I will be back for that, don't worry. So, either way, let's go ahead and take care of, I would say, three basic envelopes on this section right here. Which, thankfully though, they are pretty easy to catch, because as I said, as I said before, they move extremely slow. Although, relatively speaking though, they always try to able to split apart. So, as a result, you need to be able to pay attention to the actual environment very, very clearly. And then, exponentially, you could able to capture those no problem, so... And something tells me that, yeah, there's the last envelope right there. And that particular tree just almost blocked my view. But regardless, we did somehow still achieve that. So there we go. And I think, relatively speaking though, as far as I'm aware, that uh, someone also said in the comments down below, there are quite a few cookies that are very well hidden in this place. Like, I know for the fact that as soon as we're able to try to find a barrel, that uh, I believe it might be able to actually contain cookies inside it. Well, I can assure you for this point. So, either way though. So, um, I suppose I should probably also mention about this as well. About the fact that when it comes to the forms of the reversible cover, that when it comes to Sonic Origins Plus, I really love the fact that when I did look at it though, aside from the fact that I really like the fact that Tails, not only that Tails does manage to hold the actual Sega Game Gear handheld thing, but also I really love the fact that Sonic is holding the actual Mega Drive console or the Sega Genesis console and on top of that Amy just hold the uh the CD because obviously her first appearance was obviously Sonic CD of course and on top of all that stuff though Knuckles is holding so Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles uh cartridge so yeah it's a pretty cool touch in my honest opinion although the only drawback with this particular content though when it comes to Sonic Origins Plus uh they still have not mentioned about the forms of bringing back uh, you know, the old version of, uh, you know, not only Carnival Nights music, but also with Ice Cap and Launch Base, or Launch Base Zone music. So because of that, unfortunately though, the original versions of those songs has not mentioned, especially because of all that. You know what I mean, the licensing issues, especially because it's a bit of a shame, because I would love to be able to listen to those amazing nostalgia music again. So because of that, at least assuming on the PC version, you can now be able to technically mod it, so that way you that way you don't have that much issues with it. So, and on top of all that stuff though, so, something to say to me about the fact that, well, relatively speaking, Knuckles Chaotix is still not included, especially it's still going to be stuck on the Sega 32X for a very, very long time. Especially concerning about the fact that, gee, no wonder why that game didn't so well. I'm guessing it's probably because of the failure of the 32X add-on, so at least luckily I still managed to get the game on uh, my hacked Mega Drive Mini, so that way I don't have to force myself to able to pay the ridiculous amount of money for able to actually get the cartridge-only version of Knuckles Chaotix, because it's stupidly ridiculously expensive like 400 quid for that no thanks and plus not to mention now it's not that popular compared to the forms of how it does it on other popular sonic games on the not only for the mega drive or genesis but also with the forms of sonic cd as well because obviously sonic cd is also very recognizable as well especially before that you know new characters introduced and anything else to be more specific so and something tells me I don't think I can probably make it because something tells me that jackpot heffalumps has somehow gone away. But because of such though, we're able to be back for that because now we just need to be able to hit back onto Tigger's house for a little bit. Because I think someone said in the comments also that um, I believe the last few cookies in a Tigger's house is going to be somewhere slightly to the top left corner with something to do with that barrel. So let me just, uh, oh, there we go then. Nicely done. So, either way though, let's just go ahead and- Ah, oh, dang it. I think my uh, camera view just somehow screwed me up a little bit. So, either way, let's go ahead and grab this last cookie in this spot. And there we go. And I think, relatively speaking, I think we've only just got about, um, I would say, um, 15 
cookies left. So, but either way, though, let's just go ahead and go back onto the back slide. So, either way, yeah, that basically summed up as such. So, um, anyways, let's talk about the forms of some new updates for certain games recently. Well, I know for a fact that, relatively speaking, again, I'll let uh, both Mighty and Ray or some toys else were able to mention more details about that in the future when it comes to Sonic Frontiers. But, uh, relatively speaking, about the fact that out of nowhere, that, um, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach is actually coming to the Nintendo Switch. So I don't know what, what exactly that the game is going to be released on a specific release date on, but uh, we shall see what happens in due time, especially concerning about the fact that it looks like we've almost got every single Five Nights at Freddy's games on the Nintendo Switch at that one point. So it seems pretty crazy kind of thinking about it. Oh, and on top of that, Elden Ring has actually now got itself its ray tracing graphics option for not only for the PlayStation 5 version, but also with Xbox Series X or, or S and PC as well. So because of that though, they somehow managed to be able to like, I don't know, update the visuals a bit with that ray tracing. So yeah, I guess that's all I can really say about that particular visual update here and there. So yeah, that's all I can say about it. So. Anywho, so, I'm afraid to tell you for this point, guys, I think that's as far as I can talk about. Well, aside from that little brief, little, ah, oh, I know where the last few cookies are in this spot. And that's what appears to be something to do with those ticker head hedges. So, hopefully we'll try to able to find the last one. So, in some cases, it's actually over there. So, it doesn't take that long to able to actually just try to figure it out, because... For whatever reason, back in the forms of when I played this on the GameCube version, I have no idea why I somehow managed to be able to couldn't figure out how to find those specific last few cookies in this spot. But I do know for one thing, it's all about just Ticker's heads. Managed to be able to actually keep those cookies well hidden. So, again, if you have a first time experience in this dream, then chances are though that, you know, you might have a hard time trying to able to figure out where the last few cookies in this spot. So, either way, good thing I finally managed to found them. So, there we go. It looks like we're basically done here. But, there is, generally speaking, we've only got the last five cookies in this dream. And that something tells me we will be able to focusing on uh, the final section where it comes to not only in Tigger's dream, but also about the fact that we could potentially try to able to take care of the last bravest of the mall segment. And because of that, well, suffice to say that we're basically done with Bravest of the Mall Challenge. So because of that, sometimes it can be quite lengthy at points, especially because, relatively speaking, you know, assuming, of course, if you know uh, the strategy when it comes to, like, you know, doing with all that stuff. So, yeah, that pretty much summed up as such. So, anywho. So, apparently, though, for certain heavilums, as far as we've already stumbled across into ever since the beginning portion of Tigger's Dream, um, someone, someone said in the comments about the fact the matter is, though, that those, uh, specific heavilums, you know, with that particular broomstick that, uh, they somehow managed to able to use, uh, during the forms of the actual combat sequence or something like that, um, I think, relatively speaking, though, well, these are called, well, they do have names, by the way, so these are called... Um, Road Sweeper Heffalumps, so, and I think relatively speaking about this also, that will be also be the final time we're going to be seeing Road Sweeper Heffalumps, because, well, out of all the actual Heffalumps in this entire game, it only shows up in Tigger's Dream, and that's pretty much about it, so, I've obviously have no idea why they only use that Heffalump in one Dream only, so, but either way though, I just have no idea why I've somehow managed to able to point things out. And something tells me, with that particular loading screen right there, you know with Piglet and the potion just go back and forth, I like the fact that when a potion decides to be able to run away, Piglet is all like happy and cheery, but when a potion decides to be able to chase after Piglet, Piglet is in uh, worry mode, or, or panic mode, whatever it's been more specific, as you can tell from the animation itself. And fundamentally speaking though, we've never actually stumbled across into um, panic mode, uh, throughout the majority of the game so far, which is actually quite good, even though the only time I do somehow manage to able to come across into worry mode, and that is the accidental moment in, uh, Rouge Dream by mistake, because obviously that Heffalump did show up out of nowhere, so, but either way, though, that might be saying something, so... 
Alright, here we go. On to the last section of Bravest of the Mall Challenge. And something tells me with the last uh, five cookies is going to be in this particular section as well. In that particular entrance to the Haunted Mansion itself. So, either way. And, yeah, as I said before, this is one of the hardest sections in terms of the forms of Bravest of the Mall Challenge. Because, again, that jackpot Heffalong just somehow managed able to just keep on, you know knowing what to do for this point and there we go because that was the final five of those cookies so relatively speaking hopefully we're able to get the last one out of this barrel and there we go we've collected every single cookies in piglet's big game so yeah congratulations to myself especially thanks to someone in the comments that able to suggest me where the guides of certain uh, cookies are so thank you so much for able to tell me where i'm supposed to go so either way yeah that's all i can say about this point guys i mean surely that's all i can really talk about in terms of bravest of the mall challenge and i will have to admit it though i believe tinker stream so far it might actually took me about almost roughly 30 minutes so yeah, don't expect things to be a little bit more lengthier than that, especially because about the fact that sometimes you'll take you a lot of attempts if you try to do it successfully, so... Okay, so here we go again on this harder section, and hopefully our mouse will get this this time, because, you know, it's just how tr tricky and difficult that can be. Especially it's bad enough you have to do with this very strict time limit. So either way though, let's just see if we can able to just corner him. There we go. And now we can able to do with the Road Sweeper Heffalump, and... Come on! There we go! Whew! We've done it. We've finally done it. So either way... You are the bravest of them all. Message will pop up for the final time. So, relatively speaking, Tigger's dream is finally concluded. For reals. So, either way, now we've actually done with all those uh, dreams now. So, we've only got one more thing to go. That's, of course, the final level in the game. Now, before we're able to do all the last stuff, though, let me briefly show you guys what's going to be on the left that I forgot to able to show you guys during the forms of in uh, by the end of Tigger's Dream is that, well obviously you know about the fact that we haven't unlocked anything from the very beginning, but now we actually do, because if we go in here, you can able to actually briefly look up on uh, one of those cutscenes on one of those dreams, and I'm pretty sure they played pretty much exactly the same, aside from lighting differences in Al's dream's case, and I'm pretty sure the frame rate has dropped for about 30 frames per second or something, so that's the only differences compared to uh, Whenever you try to encounter them in joining gameplay. So, yeah, that's all I can say about it. And thus, we've already seen those cutscenes before. So, anyway, let's go ahead and utilize the telescope for the final time. And because of that, well, suffice to say, we've not only collected every potion, but also we've gathered all the cookies in the game. And the narrator hasn't said a word because we've already accomplished it. So, either way, time to move on to the final level in a game known as Flooded Woods. So, let's see what the narrator has to say about this particular final level in Piglet's Big Game. And so, Piglet was going to be a hero. And not only in the dreams of his dear friends. This time, Piglet would be a hero for real. So as you can see, we stumbled across a boat because as you know, 100 acre woods is entirely flooded. So because of that, all you have to do now is about the fact that, remember all these heffalumps and warzels that we've already keep fighting for? Well, basically they apparently now appeared in reality. So meaning about the fact that we must rescue all of our friends po with Pooh, Owl, Roo, Rabbit, Tigger, and most notably, Eeyore. And so that is how. A very small piglet became a very big hero. But he was not yet finished saving his friends. He still had to find a way to join them. Help! Piglet! Hello, piglet! Over here! So as you can see, about the fact the matter is though, there are some objects to pick up. <laughs> Ranging between the empty honey pot, my as well as my that familiar blue ball, empty. and on top of that, the memory book as well. <laughs> and I think something tells me, with flooded Could words, I think this particular level does bring up to three different sections. <laughs> 
Like, the first section, all you have to do is just about the fact that we need to rescue not only Al, but also Rue and Pooh. So let's get started with Al first. Owl! Owl! Piglet, my dear fellow, do help me! Oh, Owl, in your book of memories, there's a picture of you fleeing from monsters by flying. By flying? Oh, how silly of me, of course! Flying! Right you are! I'm coming, Piglet! <laughs> Thank you, my small friend. Without you, I can't imagine what I would have done. Oh, <laughs> you're welcome, Howell. I think I'll keep stretching my wings and have a look about. <laughs> Bye, Owl. Now, the reason why we take care of Owl first, because he's one of the easiest of the bunch. Because, as you can tell, the main emphasis on this entire level of flooded woods, you're in a time limit. So because of this, though, you need to, you need to rush this level, because otherwise, if you don't manage to be able to take care of not only certain heffalumps, like, for instance, the bee heffalump, that basically, if you manage to be able to let one of our friends get scared by any of those heffalumps or warsaws, Basically what happens was you have to start all over again for this entire level because as I said before this entire level is broken up to three segments. So because of this though, basically I highly suggest you're able to take care of Owl first because, well, relatively speaking, we don't need to worry about just trying to take care of hide and seek uh, Woolsaw because that was actually, well, kind of worthless to be able to take him on. So either way though, that takes care of the Bee Heffalump. Oh, Rue, you don't have to be afraid. You're safe now. I guess I am. Oh, thank you, Piglet. Now, normally, I was expecting to be able to go for the chronological order when it comes to rescuing friends, but I'm actually going to do the reverse order with all these uh, sections. So because of that, somehow we've managed to be able to rescue Rue, and now we need to take care of rescuing Pooh by taking down Basic Heffalump. And relatively speaking, this is going to be the final time we're going to be, uh, well, stumbling across the Basic Heffalump. And I have no idea why, what the heck is up with Piglet's momentum after that particular cinematic cutscene is finished. Or is it something tells me it's kind of similar to, like, Tails occasionally slid during the forms of one of those Sonic Adventure cutscenes? You know, in the forms of being a supersonic story? Oh, jeez, I almost got to get screwed up right there, but luckily I did somehow manage to get that in time. So, every once in a while, every single types of heffalumps and wazzles now actually have three health. So, because of that, though, you need to be able to take them down a lot faster than the forms of how it does it previously. Thank you, Piglet. I would have been quite unrescued without your rescuing. Oh, this um, adventure has made me rather um, hungry. Alright, so the first section is done, so now we move on to the second section that not only do we able to actually stumble across into four different types of enemies, but also we might as well rescue Eeyore, Rabbit, and Tigger. So, I'm also able to do the reverse order on that particular section as well. So, yeah, that's just the way of how I roll. Once again, Piglet, full of courage, went off to save his friend. <laughs> Piglet, do something, please! Piglet! Piglet! Over here! This tiger needs rescuing! Ah. Okay, so first off, we need to pick up this particular random object laying on the ground. So something tells me we do need able to 
um, activate something. Oh, yes. I think I would say we do need to able to shove this rock alongside with the other two rocks. So that way we can able to actually rescue Eeyore. But again, I'm going to do the reverse order. So I think we should probably save Tico first. Because I think something tells me if we don't manage to do this, then we're pretty much going to get screwed. And as I said before, you're in the time limit. So if you get screwed up, you have to start all over at the beginning portion of the level again. Because believe me, this entire level has no checkpoints, so if you get scared or frightened, or any of your friends get fr afraid from any types of enemies, well again, you need to start all over again. So because of that, I can totally see why a lot of people seem to get a bit of frustration with this level, because I totally get it because it's just the finale portion of the game, so either way, let's just go ahead and take care of the forms of sporty walls all, but while I'm at it, let's go ahead and pick up that particular singular carrot, for later Was so either way though we can save that until for later as i said earlier so either way no i noticed right from the start though is about the fact that i'm pretty sure that unlike the game boy advance version that the game boy advance version is like a full-fledged level whilst in the console version it's all about just trying to take care of the rest of the remaining uh enemies throughout the game so either way farewell to sporty Walsall. so either way game's over pal game's over and let's just grab the potion and save Tigger. Oh, thank you, Piglet Old Pal. You're just a lifesaver, a hero. You cut me out of that flood. And, buddy, that is something a Tigger will never forget. <laughs> Alright, so only two friends needs to be rescued left, and uh, next up we do need to rescue Rabbit next, because I believe out of all the actual uh, segments throughout the majority of Flooded Woods, a Rabbit section does able to contain not one, but two um, Heffalumps on screen. Because as soon as you're able to take care of, to able to actually try to actually access to Tigger's uh, section, Basically, another Heffalump shows up, because as I said before, that basically two of those Heffalumps will be existent, and... Um, hello? Can I activate the combat mode? Oh, no. Oh, don't tell me. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I have honestly have no idea what the heck just happened right there, but uh, I almost first thought I was going to get myself softlocked, but apparently, though... Pause in the game does manage to fix itself, so thanks for that. Ah, oh, dang it! Ah, oh, shoot. Okay, um, oh no. Ah, okay. I need to just run away from him for the time being, and uh, I think we should probably take care of the forms of the, you know what I mean, my least favorite enemy in the game, which is, of course, uh, Jackpot Heffalump. But thankfully, this will be the definition of the final time we're about to take on Jackpot Heffalump, luckily. So, afterwards, though, well, we're never going to see him again, because, well, obviously, as I said before, every single enemy nowadays do have three health, so, either way, we'll have to take him on very quickly. So, assuming, of course, if you manage to get a good distance, then obviously you should be good to go. So, either way, only one more hit should do it, or one more uh, scary face to pull off, and you'll be gone for good. So no need to deal with all this random block factor to it. So either way, farewell, Jackpot Heffalump, you useless to me. But either way, that's just the way how I think about it. Because uh, whatever my master first got to this point when I play the GameCube version, my lord, this stage is really tough, especially because, as I said before, no checkpoints to be found. So because of that, though, yeah, there was that one particular point I somehow managed to get stuck on for the longest time. But either way, though, we'll get to that point until for later. So either way, now I was going to deal with this. Oh god, that was close. If I don't make it in time, I'll be screwed. So either way, there we go. That basically takes care of Trooper Heffalump. Oh, thank you, Piglet. Phew, that was close. And uh, quite a frightful situation. Not that I was frightened, of course. Well, I have to go. Got lots of carrots to pick up, you know.
And now we're going to be moving on to the final friend we need to rescue, and that is of course Eeyore. And of course, we do need to take care of this last enemy before we take on the final section in this entire stage. And that is of course Mirror Walsall. So because of that though, of course, as to be expected, as soon as we're able to try to take care of him, it'll make things a bit difficult because especially noticeable he likes to able to shift between different screens all at once. So either way though, but at least I've already got this covered because I've actually experienced this uh, quite a few times during the forms of in the 2010s era with all that, you know, 2012 to 2015 and stuff like that. But either way though, I'm pretty sure I got this, but I'm pretty sure about the fact that, well, it's still pretty tricky though, especially noticeable if you have a first time experience in this particular stage, you might have a hard time with it. So either way, there goes the mirror walls all, and sure enough, we'll pretty much rescued Eeyore. So either way, and that takes care of section number two. You shouldn't have bothered yourself for me, Piglet. But Eeyore, I couldn't let you down. Well, thank you, Piglet, for helping me. Alright, so now we've actually done with section 2, as I said before. So now we move on to the third and possibly the final section in terms of flooded woods, which pretty much leads us to the final boss in Piglet's big game. <laughs> so then, the rumors are true after all, because after all, our friends seem to believe that now Gramasaurus is now reality. So this means welcome to the final boss in Piglet's big game, known as Gramasaurus. And basically, the, the best strategy for this is, I highly suggest you're able to go further away from Gramasaurus before you deal with the combat mode. And that way you can able to deal with some fast button inputs just like before. And basically you have to do this for about three times. And he seems to be moving a bit slower as far as I realized. And once you're done with three hits, that was it. There goes Grammar Source, and that was it. So let's enjoy the ending to Piglet's Big Game for the Nintendo GameCube slash PlayStation 2. Hey there, Piglet. Thanks for getting us out of this muddlesome mess. Oh yes, it was very brave of you, Piglet. Oh my, I, I do hope nothing has happened to Christopher Robin. Oh, Christopher Robin. Where have you all been? I've been looking all over for you. I'm starting to get worried. Oh, there's nothing to worry about, Christopher Robin. We're all quite safe and sound, thanks to Piglet. Really? Thanks to Piglet? You faced your fears, didn't you, Piglet? I'm so very proud of you. It's thanks to you, Christopher Robin. I just followed your advice. Come now, Piglet. It was you, and you alone who faced all those fears. Now I suppose that you all must be very hungry after that big adventure. And so it was that Piglet had become a hero to all his friends. And he would never again think that he was too small or too frightened. So yeah, after that final cutscene in the game, I'm pretty sure it takes us to the credit sequence, which, as a result, always shows us is just a black background with all these uh, text here and there. So that's pretty much about it, basically. So yeah, let's give my final thoughts of Piglet's big game for the Nintendo GameCube slash PlayStation 2. I will have to admit, though, after the events of 20 years ago, since when this game first came out, I did surprisingly enjoy it. Sure, it's a bit simple, and especially noticeable as like a baby's horror game, but I will admit though right away, I actually quite surprisingly enjoyed it. Like, as a result, let's start with the positives first. Uh, first of all, I really do like the presentation about this game, especially concerning about the fact that it almost matches the source material from the likes of Piglet's Big Movie, although sure, the plot may look a bit different, especially because you go from dream to dream, which does remind me of a similar kind of concept, as in one of those Spongebob episodes called Sleepy Time, except the fact that you're obviously going to be the brave hero, of course, to able to take care of Heffalumps and Walsalls, after all. And also, I feel like the story is actually pretty simple, and on top of all that stuff, though, I enjoyed the gameplay aspect, especially noticeable of how cool and unique some uh, world environments that takes place, 
for certain dreams. I think honestly my favorite dreams will obviously have to be Pooh's dream and Owl's dream because they're all both unique. Well, not particular world themes, especially Eel's dream especially as well. So either way though, that's what I can say about it. And on top of that, well, relatively speaking, as I mentioned this before, the graphics do look very, very good. Especially if there was, this is on the, uh, the GameCube and PlayStation 2. And on top of that, the soundtrack, while a bit limited, but I do manage to be able to enjoy the relaxation aspect. So because of that though, and also pretty chilled as well. And finally, the controls, well, it does take a while to get used to, especially noticeable this is the PlayStation 2 version, as I mentioned this before. But surprisingly enough, I'm now more accustomed to the PS2 controls controller of this game. So as a result though, I managed to be able to enjoy it for quite a bit. So yeah, you can be able to definitely recommend getting this game. Sure, it may not be for everyone of course, but you should definitely give this a chance, especially concerning after 20 years since when it first came out, it's still recommendable. So as a result, yeah, that's what I can say about it. So this is me, Maxi here, from the likes of the Maxi Toys, and until then, I will see you guys at some point in the future to do some more Let's Plays. So either way, I'll promise you I'll get around to Winnie the Pooh's Rumbly or Tumbly adventure at some point, so I'll see you then, bye.